Well, our big storm that's moving through the country is continuing to produce tornadoes, damaging winds, reports of hail coming out, and those severe storms will continue through the overnight. If anything, they'll start to work to the north and east into parts of Missouri, Illinois, and eventually parts of Indiana. Plus, we've got a threat for heavy snow. Believe it or not, winter storm watches are up. We're going to get into it. As we move into Tuesday, now our threat really starts to hone in into parts of Ohio. A pretty decent area here. This is a moderate risk there in the red. Now, that's a four out of five on the scale from the Storm Prediction Center out of Norman, Oklahoma. And that's pretty significant. And not only that, we've got a three out of five. That's an enhanced area all the way down into parts of Alabama, northwest Georgia, most of East Tennessee, parts of southwest Virginia, a good chunk of West Virginia, and then up into Pennsylvania, really surrounding that moderate risk area there into Ohio and then across Tennessee. Again, I think this is some er an area you're going to want to watch for those storms as they move through on Tuesday. The Storm Prediction Center also lining up with that idea. They're hashing out this area, and wherever you see this hashed uh, black sort of those hashes here where they're just crisscrossing like this, that's terrible art, I know, but you get the idea. That is a, a significant area of severe weather, and this is the tornado risk heading into Tuesday. Clearly, this is the highest threat across Ohio, but that does extend in and around that area all the way down into North Alabama, as far east as Knoxville, Pikeville, Kentucky. Looks like an right about Charleston, West Virginia, and then north, right up into the West Virginia panhandle, right to the edge of Pennsylvania, and then right across southern parts of Lake Erie, back through Ohio, and then central Indiana, all the way down into Kentucky, west of Nashville. So Nashville in this area heading into tomorrow, uh, there's going to be a lot of wind shear in the atmosphere. And with that vertical velocity, with all of those strong thunderstorms, Severe hail looking likely, too, with some strong damaging winds embedded in some of those thunderstorms. This is the significant tornado parameter. This is the latest run of the HRR. Uh, as we move through the overnight into the early morning hours, things do get a little more stable, but back here across parts of Kentucky and Tennessee, the storms will be going. And then as we move through the day, look how this threat really picks up into parts of Indiana. This is the latest run. Now into Ohio, and anything over a 1 is significant. And you can see that all across the South. I mean, if we could just take this off the map, we would still be watching this area for tornadoes heading into tomorrow. But clearly we are zoning in right here in Ohio because look at those colors, bright pink and almost white. Those numbers are 9, 10, 11. And the significant tornado parameter takes things into account like helicity, which is your spin in the atmosphere, uh, wind shear, instability, also another parameter called the supercell parameter. It takes into all of those things. Uh, it plugs it in and gives you out an index number. And uh, I think it was in thermodynamic meteorology or maybe severe weather. I'm not real sure. I can't remember exactly which class it was, but I remember one was the number you wanted to watch. And when you see seven, eight, nine, tens, yeah, you got to wonder, wow, it's going to be a heck of a day tomorrow in Ohio. Things do start to settle down some. Uh, it's interesting to watch this latest run. The HRRR does really good. It starts to narrow in on some of the smaller details. And, you know, when I worked in West Virginia, one thing that, uh, that I always heard was that tornadoes come to West Virginia to die. And you can clearly see how that instability, or at least the tornado parameter, and it's not a zero, by the way. Watch how as it moves out of Ohio, or at least that energy does, we start to see that tornado parameter really start to drop. Same could be said for eastern Kentucky, right here where your mountains start, just south of Lexington, southeast of Lexington, notice how it's almost like a barrier. And it's not that they can't go through the mountains, it's that the mountains likely offer a little more stability. Some cooler air, that usually is what comes into play. And then heading into, looks like tomorrow night, into early Wednesday, we'll have to watch these storms that fire here into early Wednesday morning as our front moves east. So, Again, this is still out in time. I don't know how good the HRR is doing on this. The NAM isn't really showing that much instability, but that is something to keep an eye on as we head into Wednesday. Although we are dealing with the severe weather, we're going to have some pretty big thunderstorms here. If you watched the video yesterday, I said, listen, there's a lot of dynamics at play here. Here's the jet streak that's moving through on the front right side of that. That's typically where you see that severe weather, and it looks to be lining up as there's your jet streak, and uh, here's where your severe would likely be as a result of that. But with those big thunderstorms going on, the large global models don't do a good job of taking those thunderstorms into account. You get that release of latent heat in the atmosphere, 10 to 20 to 30,000 feet. As that heat is released through condensation through those big thunderstorms that form, 
then you affect what's happening in the atmosphere. And I think I'm going to argue, do we pay more attention to the NAM here? I mean, the NAM is taking low pressure closer to Detroit uh, and then across the lake here to the east of Michigan, whereas the European does something completely different. It has the low much further to the west. In fact, wrapping in on itself and pulling a dry slot up in, in here into Michigan, and that would completely almost annihilate the snow totals. I mean, look at this. This is the latest NAM bringing that moisture up with the low, meeting the cold air, putting down a good coating of snow from Lansing north back through uh, Wisconsin, where we actually have winter storm watches. Head to weather.gov to get the latest watches for your area if you're wondering if you're under a watch, but that winter storm watch doesn't include Milwaukee. And you can see this area here about where the watch is decent for snow. No watches here into Michigan yet. That might change. But again, the global models, which I'm going to show you in just a second, paint a different story. The latest NAM model trying to push snow down into northern Pennsylvania into the Poconos. I don't think that happens. And I think this is, is wish casting here close to New York City. I don't think we get the snow there. Let's pop over to the European. I think this has a better handle on things. Look, very little snow here in this part of Michigan, a little bit right here just south of the bridge here, and then once you pop up into the UP of Michigan, and then very similar here back into Wisconsin, and then the heavy snow for the interior areas of New England as our big low just wraps up here and just dumps the snow. And I really think that some areas here could see up to a foot and a half, close to two feet. We're talking about the higher elevations of Maine back into the White Mountains and the Green Mountains here into Vermont, New Hampshire, the Adirondacks. We're going to see some good snows up into here, even over towards the Tug Hill Plateau and down into the Catskills. Outside of that, if, if you're down in the Hudson Valley here, right around the river, I think it's going to be tough to squeeze snow out. I think the same thing could be said anywhere along the lakes, down in those lower elevations. I know it's not that low, but a couple hundred feet could mean the difference between rain and snow with temperatures as marginal as they're going to be. Now, as this storm impacts the East Coast, we do have some weather across the West, some rain and snow showers moving into the Pacific Northwest as we move into Thursday and Friday with more, look at this, rain and snow all the way into Southern California. The Sierra is going to pick up more snow. The Intermountain West starts to get a little more snow too. So we have a trough in the West, ridge in the central United States. In fact, some decent warming here. And then there's our big trough in the Northeast that keeps us cold, I think, all the way into the weekend. So a lot going on in the weather. I'll keep you guys updated. If you like this content, I don't ask for anything. I really don't. If you want to hit subscribe, that would be amazing. It really helps the channel. If you're a subscriber, give it a thumbs up. I appreciate all you guys for checking it out and supporting me here on YouTube. Have a great night or day, whatever time you're watching this.